Hello and welcome to another Werner Wear video. In this video I will show you how I deployed my Spring Boot project generated by my Swagger CodeGen project to AWS. We need to create an artifact and an environment in which we can deploy a system worthy of production. This means following the instructions pictured here for Spring Boot applications. And the first step is to create a fully executable jar. So the idea here is pretty simple. Up until this point, we've been saying java-jar and then the name of our jar to run it. But what we really want to do is have it be self-executing. So we can say something like, just run the jar as if it was any other executable. With the Maven project, this is simply a matter of dropping in a new tag inside of the plugin. A configuration of executable set to true. Then we rebuild the artifact and you'll find that it is executable. The executable jar allows us to set up a Linux service more simply and cleanly. Here you'll see that we're going to use installation as a systemd service here in the instructions. But first, it's important to understand what services we are going to use to support the new Swagger app. This is a very simple setup. The main purpose of which is to allow users of the new Swagger service to access it via the wernerware.net domain. The first step is when the browser looks up demo.wernerware.net and gets back a CNAME record corresponding to the application load balancer. The browser can go ahead and start negotiating an SSL connection with the load balancer. The load balancer then goes back to Amazon Certificate Manager to retrieve a certificate to present to the client. The load balancer then proceeds to call the REST method on the EC2 instance. Finally, now that the server's identity has been proven to the client, the SSL connection can terminate with the payload of the REST call from the EC2 instance via the application load balancer. Now it is time to discuss the setup and administration of the Amazon Linux instance in EC2 that will run our Swagger application. As I mentioned before, I chose an EC2 Nano instance. I chose this because it is the smallest available type of EC2 instance and should be very affordable and more than enough to support the needs of the web service as it is being used only by myself right now. There are a few things we have to do in the Amazon Linux OS before we can deploy the service. First, we need to get the jar onto the EC2 instance via S3. Then we need to copy the jar to var slash swagger fund. Then we're going to create a Linux user in order to run the app because it should not be the root user that is running the jar. Then we're going to assign ownership of the jar file to the new user, and we will create a new service description. We will enable that service description, and finally we will start the service. I'm going to create a new EC2 instance to show you how this process works from scratch. I will add it to the same VPC and apply the same security group, which allows port 8080 and my SSH session.
I've created a new IM role for the EC2 instance. It does not have any IM privileges, but instead will be used as the principal on an S3 bucket policy to allow the AWS command line on the instance to download from the bucket. Here is the control page for the bucket. The AWS console provides an easy interface for uploading and the permissions tab over here will allow you to get the bucket policy. This allows us to restrict the EC2 instance access only to this bucket. For this next part, we'll need to SSH into the EC2 instance, as I have already here. So first, we're going to check out what objects are available to the EC2 instance in S3 with a AWS S3 API list objects bucket of Wernerware Swagger upload. And then we're going to go ahead and download the object, which is our jar at AWS S3 get object bucket of the same Wernerware Swagger upload with a key of Swagger Spring 1.0.0 jar and naming the file the same. Then we'll do a quick ls to check out our file. We need to install Java. Let's go ahead and give it permission to download it, what it needs. So now we want to copy our jar over to its final destination. So we're going to make a directory. Guess we're going to need sudo on that. And we're going to copy the, the jar over. And we'll check to make sure I made it. And it did. Now we will create a Swagger user and assign ownership of the jar in the var folder to that user. Now we're going to go ahead and create our service description. We're going to insert the template we found in the instructions online and then just change a couple of things. Change the service description and we'll change the location of the jar. Go ahead and save and quit. Actually, we need to go back and do one more thing. We need to change the user from the template value to Swagger. We can enable the new service with a call to system control.
Might need to pseudo that too. We'll need to set the execution permission on the jar. Okay, and then we can tell the service to start. Need to sudo that. Then we can do a top. And we'll see that we have a Java process running with the Swagger user. The steps we have taken up to this point allow us to ensure that the Swagger service is up pretty much whenever the EC2 instance is up. Now we can discuss the configuration of the application load balancer. Since we're using the app load balancer mostly for its ability to integrate with Amazon Certificate Manager and the potential for defense against attacks online, rather than for reliability or actual load balancing, I have specified that there are only two availability zones and a single target group. This target group contains only the single instance I created for this video, and it performs a health check on slash demo slash swagger UI dot HTML. This should serve as the basis of an alarm to let me know if something goes wrong with the service. In other words, when it goes down, I should get an SNS or an email based on this failure. But I haven't configured that yet. Here on the listeners tab, you'll see the one listener that I've configured for HTTPS on 8080. <clears throat> you can view the certificates that I set up through ACM. You'll see that it's set up for star.wernerware.net which means that I can use it on any single name subdomain for my, do for my WernerWare.net domain. Finally, I will briefly cover the configuration of the Amazon Certificate Manager. Configuring the certificates in ACM was simply a matter of going to ACM and clicking on request a certificate and placing a couple of CNAME records on the domain that I had set up with another provider. As you can see here, I've got certificates set up for wernerware.com and wernerware.net. And now putting it all together, we can navigate to https colon slash slash demo dot wernerware dot net 8080 demo slash swaggerui.html and you'll see that it's hosted nicely and we have a certificate available and it's registered with Amazon. Please see the links in the descriptions for more particulars on this service that I have deployed. Thanks for watching and hope to see you on the next video. Next level.